One of the new features in NetApp's clustered data on tap 8.2 is the ability to apply granular quality of service levels to a volume, LUN, individual file, or storage virtual machine. In this video, I'll demonstrate the benefits of applying a QoS policy using an SRM script callout. In this video, you'll see the same recovery plan being run. On the left side of the screen with no QoS policy applied, and on the right side with a QoS policy applied. I have two virtual machines in this environment. The first one on the bottom left is Big Apple. This is my production workload in New York, my primary data center. The one on the right is my virtual machine in Barcelona, El Toro. When I run the recovery plan, this is where you'll see El Toro power up. In SRM, you can add a step before or after any existing step. You can also add a step to an individual virtual machine. In my lab, I chose to do both. In my first step, I verify whether or not this is a test recovery or an actual recovery. If it's a test recovery, it's going to just skip the QoS entirely. If it's an actual recovery, it'll go ahead and apply the QoS policy. On the step that I added to my virtual machine El Toro, I skipped my QoS policy on the left side of the screen, and I applied the QoS policy on the right side. This is a planned migration, so the workflow goes as follows. SRM will call the NetApp Storage Replication Adapter to do a snap mirror update. Once the update is complete, SRM will gracefully power down the virtual machines in my recovery plan. The SRA will do another snap mirror update, so I have my virtual machines in a quiesced state. Change the recovery site storage to writable, and then power up my virtual machines in the previously configured priority of my recovery plan. In this scenario, my goal is to ensure that my New York workload never gets impacted by any migration from Barcelona. So for that reason, I'm applying a QoS policy to my Barcelona workload before the virtual machine powers on in New York. On my virtual machines, I have a synthetic workload using Iometer. As you can see, prior to the failover, New York is unimpacted. On the left side, El Toro is starting to power up, and now I can see there's some shared performance. On the right side, I've limited El Toro to just 250 IOPS. As expected, with only 250 IOPS, El Toro is taking a little longer to power up. On the right side, El Toro is already starting to boot up and New York is unimpacted. As you can see, by using NetApp Cluster Data on Tap's quality of service, I was able to guarantee performance for my New York machines by adding a custom script callout to my virtual machines before they fell over. To see the PowerShell scripts that I used for this demonstration, go to pedroarrow.com. 